That right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime. Loser. I hope you're doing well. So folks, today we're going to talk about old Sarah Boone. One other thing too, but first, Sarah Boone. If you were to edit together all of the times on this show, I've said something like, Sarah Boone's trial starts next week. Sarah Boone's trial set to kick off two weeks from tomorrow. Sarah Boone's trial scheduled for April. The clip would no joke be a minute long at this point. And yet here we are, three years after she zipped up her husband George in the suitcase, pulled out her phone, filmed herself sadistically torturing and murdering George. Sarah, Sarah, you gotta let me out. I can't breathe. Sarah, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Sarah, that video is brutal. Absolutely brutal. I can already hear it blaring over the courtroom speakers. Sarah. Then Sarah goes up and goes to bed, somehow sleeps better than I do on a normal, uneventful night, comes down late morning, all rested, huh, feeling good, finds George dead inside the suitcase, doesn't call law enforcement yet, Meanwhile, Sarah's ex-husband is trying to get Sarah on the phone to see if Sarah can pick up their son that day. It's Sarah's day to pick up the son, but normally she's too drunk to do it. So the ex-husband is seeing if she can or if it's like usual and he has to do it even though it is her day. She finally picks up the ex-husband's phone call around 1 p.m. and says, George is dead. And he says, well, you got to call the police. Sarah. And she goes, can you come over? And you go, uh, what? Can you come over? And so the ex-husband goes over, walks in to the horrible scene, sees George dead and stiff and purple in the shape of a suitcase. Jesus, Sarah, you gotta call the police. I'm gonna wait out front. Sarah finally calls law enforcement. They all come out. That This whole scene is on body cam footage. You can watch it. But at this point, Sarah seems most concerned about her Dr. Pepper that she left in the apartment. Can I go in and get my Dr. Pepper? No. What? No, Sarah. Absolutely not. This is a murder investigation now. This is a crime scene. You can't go stomping around the scene changing everything to get your Dr. Pepper, okay? Forget about the Dr. Pepper, Sarah. Law enforcement questions the ex-husband, who's just been hanging out front this whole time, his answers become important in a bit. They talk to Sarah. She says it was a wholesome game of hide and go seek, gone awry. They were playing and they asked Sarah, can we look through your phone? And she says, yeah, and hands her phone over. One thing I'm curious about once the trial finally does start, did she take the infamous Sarah video and then delete it thinking once a video is deleted, it's gone. Poof. No one will ever see that little video I took. Or was she too drunk to remember she took the snuff film video and had no idea it was on her phone because she forgot. And then when the police said, can we look through your phone? She took out her phone and handed it to him, not remembering the life ruining video that she took the night before was on it. Here you go. The video or the phone, her phone was given to a tech person back at the station to go through it. Imagine doing that job, okay? Nonsense picture, worthless tech. Oh my, call the boss. You're not gonna believe this video. Then they bring Sarah in. The next day, she does the infamous one for the books interrogation where she says no malicious not intentional. We weren't drinking, but I do blame the wine. You guys are literally killing me right now by showing me this video that I took of me killing my husband. She asks for George's wedding ring off his cold dead finger because she said she pays for it. And they, har they arrest her at the end of that interrogation. And that's where things slow way down. Here we are three years later. And a big reason that we're here three years later and it hasn't gone to trial yet is because a lawyer doesn't want to take the case. They're having a hard time. She's on her seventh lawyer. Seven. 
Think about that. Have you ever heard of anything even close to that? And all six of them have requested, practically begged the judge to be removed from the case. Your Honor, please, please. You don't even know. I can't, I can't work with this lady. I don't, wanna, I don't even want to be a lawyer anymore. I'm moving to India. Please, I can't do this. I want off. So then the lawyer will make a request to not want to be on the case, and then she'll get a new lawyer, and that new lawyer will get a chunk of time to put a case together. But then that lawyer... I can't do this. I want out. And now, seven lawyers later, and she writes letters to everybody. Here's the tone of her letters. I am patient. Am is underlined. She likes to underline certain words. I am patient. Clearly, after all the time already invested, and I'm still smiling and willing to go above and beyond whatever I slash we need to do to properly and truthfully convey my very convoluted mystery misunderstood side of everything, which I boldly told you in our meeting last month. I am dedicated, ready to start, overdue. Picture being a defense attorney and you get assigned, court-ordered, the Sarah Boone, your Sarah Boone's lawyer, and you're thinking to yourself, all right, Sarah Boone, Decide, deserves a fair trial and a fair shake, just like everybody else. And my job as a court-appointed court lawyer is to make sure she gets one, and that's my motivation. And then you go meet with Sarah the first time, and you're sitting across from her, and she's boldly explaining the convoluted, misunderstood side of things. And you start to space out a little bit and Sarah goes, what are you doing? Are you even listening? I'm sitting here boldly explaining my convoluted, misunderstood side of things to you and you're not even paying attention. Sorry, Sarah. That's, that's my fault. I apologize. I was daydreaming about going to the hardware store and buying a length of rope, but sorry. You were, where were you? You were boldly explaining your side of things and you're in your head you're thinking of the video sarah sarah if i was the prosecution i would see if they would install a big cartoonish lever right by my table so anytime i pulled the big lever it would play the video sarah so anytime that her side made a good point and then it was my turn to talk again i just sit back and pull the lever but I don't think I've ever seen someone have trouble getting a lawyer that will take the case. Maybe two lawyers or three, but seven really is a first. That is wild. And now, here we are, seven lawyers. The, the one she's on right now doesn't even really matter. He'll probably throw himself in the river any day now. But his name is Mr. Bankowitz. So one month ago, there was a pre-trial hearing where it was the prosecutor, Mr. Bankowitz, Sarah's new lawyer, and Sarah was off to the side. And the judge asks the prosecutor, where are we at? And the state, the prosecutor said, we're ready to go to trial. We're ready. All right. Mr. Bankowitz, Sarah's lawyer, where are we at? And Mr. Bankowitz says, Your Honor, we need a, another continuance because we're having trouble finding an expert witness that will testify. And he blamed it on the, on the budget. We're not, we can't find an expert witness that will testify for the budget that we have to hire witnesses. But I have a sneaking suspicion it has nothing to do with the budget. And the judge goes, okay, well, what, just broadly, what, what's the, the defense case? And Mr. Bankowitz, Sarah's lawyer says, battered spouse defense. And what battered spouse defense is, if somebody, if the only way to escape life-threatening abuse is to kill the partner, it's legal to do it. The only way to escape life-threatening abuse. So if that's the the defense you're going with, it's very important to get a good, credible expert that's going to get up on the stand and say, this is what battered uh, spouse defense is, explain it, and then go on to say, and this is how Sarah Boone's case fits into that. 
And then under the expert, the next important is having the person, which would be Sarah Boone in this case, also getting up on the stand and telling her story. You can't go with spattered or with a battered spouse defense and not get up there and tell the story. And so her lawyer is saying, we're having a hard time finding an expert that will testify. And the judge somewhat hilariously goes, well, how far have you gone into the pool of experts? And her lawyer goes, well, I've talked to the, the three. I talked to three of them. Sounds like the ones that are used a lot. And he said, They're, they don't want to do it. Not, not enough money in the budget. And then I've been going around to battered woman shelters trying to see if their psychologist or psycho psychiatrist will do it. And Mr. Bankowitz says, because of the case is has so much notoriety, nobody wants to testify for Sarah, which what really what he's saying is I've talked to all of the possible experts for battered spouse defense and all of them look at the evidence and look at this case and none of them are willing to get up there and say, yeah, Sarah is the victim and take an absolute beating in cross-examination I think the, probably the way it goes is at first, ideally, you want a credible, good expert that has principles and is going to get up there and, from an expert perspective, say their true beliefs. But if you can't find one because none of them are willing to take a beating during cross-examination or to get up there and say something they don't believe in and ruin their credibility, plus the clips are going to be online forever. It's If you're an expert, it's going to be a career-defining testimony. Well, you can't find a good one that will do that. So then the next option is to find a sleazeball expert that will say anything for the money. But they don't have that much money. It's a court-appointed lawyer situation. They have a set budget for experts. And so, for example, Amber Heard had some sleazeball experts but even them, it's not an easy thing to do. They got when they would get up on the stand, their hair would be done and their clothes would look nice and they'd be in a good mood. And by the time cross examination got done, because they're trying to fit and mold the case with expertise, but really they're just up there getting paid. By the end of it, their hair's messed up and they're sweating and their clothes are wilted. And you can tell they're thinking, oh man, this did not, was not easy. And this clip of me is going to be on the internet forever. And I'm going to be known for that. And so where we are in the Sarah Boone trial is seven lawyers. Who knows if Mr. Bank, how long Mr. Bankowitz will be around can't find any witnesses that'll support her case. And so it's just month after month of continuance. Right now, it's supposed to start July 24th, but a lot has to happen between then. They have to find a expert witness that will say she's the victim. And then once they do that, the prosecution also gets to have an expert talk to Sarah. So that all has to happen. The time is ticking away. I would guess that it will not even happen in July and it will keep going. And what a case. Sarah Boone. So we'll see what happens. Okay, one other thing that I'm following is three months ago, a guy's driving down the highway in California and he sees a charcoal Tesla without license plates driving erratically and it seems to be harassing another car. The other car will try to exit the highway and the charcoal Tesla that doesn't have license plate will keep it from ex exiting and then the other car will try to get away from it and the, the Tesla will chase it and the guy driving decides, huh, this is something. I should get out my phone and film this. So he gets out his phone and right as he starts filming, the car being harassed tries to exit. The charcoal Tesla pulls into that little area between the exit and if you were to stay on the highway, that little in-between zone, pulls onto that area gets out of his car with a little pipe 
as the car that he was harassing tries to drive away, he runs over and hits the car with a pipe. The guy filming is going, what the hell is going on? Tries to drive closer to get a better look at the whole thing. As he's driving by filming, the guy with the pipe that was just a little maniac sees him and now the chase is on. The guy with the pipe runs, gets back into the Tesla, is now chasing the guy that was filming him on the highway. The guy filming gets stopped in traffic. The Tesla gets right in front of him. The guy gets out again. He's doing the like, you want some of this? Huh? You want some of this? I got a pipe. Comes over, starts hitting the guy's truck with his pipe. The guy that's still filming and now his truck is being hit with the pipe came out later and said, I was thinking, should I just run the guy over? Should I pin him up, up against the wall? But I sat there for a second and thought, I don't want to go from being a victim to a suspect. And even if I do eventually get away with it, I don't want to go through a whole nightmare thing because I gunned it and ran the guy over, which was probably smart thinking. So the guy hit doing, huh, you want some of this? Hitting the truck with the pipe finally gets back in the tesla oh yeah the guy had a mask on like the old west and drives away well that guy turns over the film that he took of the him harassing the other car hitting it with the pipe hit his truck being hit with the pipe and turns it into law enforcement they put it out and go does anybody know this guy and the phone rings and someone goes, that's the same guy, the same charcoal Tesla that screamed at me in a mass storage parking lot for no reason, went totally psycho, punched my car. And then the phone rings again. That's the same guy that in the parking lot of a restaurant yelled at me and my elderly elderly mother and threw a soda can at our car and then the phone rings again that's the same guy that was terrorizing me in a parking lot and went psycho and punched me in the face and it's all women or older women and the phone rings again and then the phone rings again and I think there was a moment where the phone was ringing off the hook where law enforcement looked at each other like what is going on? This is not your average road rage incident. This is something much bigger that is happening. And then a video actually came out of the situation where I think a woman said, no, go ahead. You can go. You have the right away. And he went nuts. And the 76 year old mother of the woman was in the car. He gets out and throws a soda can at their car Right about that time, a valet driver that worked at a restaurant around the corner heard this guy screaming at two women, one of them elderly, pops his head around the corner and goes, well, hey, what is going on? You're screaming at these two women? Relax. Stop harassing these two ladies. What are you doing? And then the guy that drives the Tesla throws a soda can at the valet driver. And then the valet driver walks around and they square up. The little guy with the pipe and the valet driver are going toe to toe right there. And the valet driver knows how to fight. Throws a beautiful straight right hand right down the pipe. Staggers the, guy, the little man with the pipe back a little bit. The guy's bleeding. Now he's still screaming at the two ladies. His face is link, leaking. He gets back into his Tesla and drives away. And 10 reports of like in the past three weeks came into law enforcement. That's the guy that went totally nuts on me. That's the guy that screamed at my mom. That's the guy this. And so all of a sudden, they're putting out all these videos and saying, Somebody has to know who this guy is. Who is it? Some big TikToker with a million followers puts it out on his TikTok. Do you know who this is? The millions of TikTok followers, a couple of them know. Hey, that's Nathaniel Radamac. I know that guy. A couple other people that the law enforcement, when they put out their big, does anyone know who it is? A couple people called in knowing who it was. So all of a sudden, they're getting called that's Nathaniel Radamac. Hey, that's Nathaniel Radamac. So they find out finally who it is. The next day after they get the name, they go and arrest him. He's in the charcoal Tesla. They find $30,000 cash 
and steroids in his car. I don't know if it was like a bunch of steroids, like he's a steroid dealer, which would maybe make sense because he got the $30,000 cash, or I don't know if it's own, or if it's his own little personal steroid um, collection or for his own use, but essentially he's a little juiced out man with a pipe Hey, you want some of this? You want some of this? Who's been terrorizing everybody? His bio on social media is talk to my crowbar. And he was arrested and he was brought to court. First, the bail was set at $5.1 million. And then the judge took away bail and said, you know what? He was out on bail when he did a couple of these incidents. He's lucky that no one was hurt and no one died. If we let him out on bail, someone's going to get screamed at or someone's going to get hit with a little pipe. This guy's juiced to the tits. No, he didn't say that. But he, the judge said no bail, no. Nathaniel Radimac is staying in custody until this thing plays out. And what I want to know, here you have roided out Nathaniel Radimac with a pipe he apparently takes the license plates off of his car and goes out on the highway to harass people. Most of the incidents took place in a three-week period. So he had a bunch of other incidents, was arrested. He was out on bail for other things when this happened, but it seemed to get really bad in a three-week period. And what I was thinking, what, or I guess what I was wondering about, do you think that Nathaniel Radimac, after he has one of those incidents where he goes berserk, pulls over on the highway, gets out, man, you want some of this? Hits another car with a pipe. Do you think he gets back into his car and 10, 15, 20 minutes later when he calms down, do you think he thinks to himself, what are you doing? You're going to get caught and go to jail for this. You're an idiot. Everybody's got a camera. Every, there's dash cameras on everything. You have to stop losing your temper and flipping out. Or is it the opposite and he loves it? And in the morning before he leaves, he takes off the license plate, shines up his pipe, gets the pipe in a nice area to grab it, and then afterwards think, oh, that was a good one. What a wild one and enjoys the adrenaline that comes from it or is it the opposite where he's ashamed and goes you're an idiot we're going to get caught you're gonna get caught for this stop doing that stop going berserk on the highway with a pipe stop roiding yourself out where you can't contain your temper but it's a wild story it all of the uh, videos of him going berserk got millions and millions of views. So it's definitely one that I'm following. I want to see what happens to old Nathaniel Radimac because even though no one got hurt, seriously hurt, some woman had a nice black eye from him hitting her. But you got to think, this is the end of a long steroided out line for old Nathaniel Radamac. So we'll follow that one. I'm going to cut it off there. I love you all. See you next time. Why, Stive and why, Shami.